Uh, the conference came about, I suppose, as a result of, um, I suppose, consultation we did with the community and sporting groups around the county uh, in relation to what sport can contribute to positive mental health and wellbeing. Uh, phase one of it, I suppose, was the consultation with the local community groups, local sports organisations, local schools around uh, what we could do in Donegal in relation to building positive mental wellbeing not alone in sports clubs, but in communities in general as well. Um, and phase two of it then was the resource development, which we've done in, in terms of training. And now what the resource develop is what we're looking at uh, the conference, which is happening on the 28th of May, uh, and I suppose showcasing the work that we've done, but also then, I suppose, tying it in with um, the various clubs uh, the, sorry, the various organisations, sporting organisations uh, that are doing a lot of work around positive mental well-being and I suppose really looking at what sport can contribute to building positive uh, mental health and well-being in, in, in sports clubs. The, the Charter for Clubs in 2012, and the big focus there was the one at all costs mentality that's crept into not just adult sport but sport at underage level and that's, that's something that you see as a, a big challenge and a big issue at the moment. It is. It is a big issue. We we see it. Look, at, obviously, looking at it from, um, you know, from the one at all costs. It, it's it can be quite unhealthy in, in certain contexts. Um, a lot of young people we find there's a lot of dropout in terms of the fourteen to eighteen year olds dropping out of sport because of anxieties, because of pressures being applied, I suppose, by the by the adults in a lot of clubs uh, in relation to the winning mentality. Uh, we feel through the the training and and the program that we have here. That we can actually, um, you know, we can have that winning uh, mentality, but we also can do it uh, in a number of different ways, and it doesn't have to be pressure, pressure all of the time. Uh, we feel that you know, sport is there to be enjoyed as well, uh, and and you know, every child and every young person should have that experience of of uh, having that fun in sport. Teresa, I suppose sport can be like a, a release from the pressures and stuff of everyday life, self esteem confidence and stuff is a big thing in sport but it can also be one of the one of the big problems absolutely and i think we know the positive effect of sport and, and as you say it is that release so kids or young adults can go and they can get away from their problems they can meet up with their peers they can enjoy their sport and i think the fun and enjoyment is the big one and, and that's really what, what we're getting to with these resources um the win at all costs um, mentality that Miles has just spoken about, I suppose is the thing that's detrimental to the self-confidence and, and self-esteem. It doesn't lend to grow in that in kids and young adults and we're hoping just by these nature of programmes that we can move away from that and encourage more fun and enjoyment. And we've got a number of well-known and high-profile sports people, former sports people, coming to highlight issues and challenges that they've faced, that they've overcome in their own personal and their own sporting lives as well. Yeah, we have people like Oshie McConville who's had his own battles with, with gambling um, and I suppose he's going to talk about maybe the positive effect sport has had on his life but also maybe how he used his sport to get away from, from things that were going on outside of his sporting environment. We have Breffney Early again who had his own problems with mental health <coughs> issues has completed the world cycle race and won 30,000 kilometres, 26 different countries. So it's supposed to be a fantastic story and, and one that I know we're looking forward to hearing. Um, Peter Mitchell, former player with Leeds Football Club, who um, had a road traffic accident. So obviously his professional career ended. But again, how sport turned that around. He joined the Belfast Knights, which are a basketball team, and the positive effects that had on, on his life now as well. We're going to look some more then at the, the coaching side of it. So we have got Antonio Montero from the Coach Diary, a well-known football blog, um, who's responsible for rolling out the Silent Sidelines campaign in Ireland. Um, we have Jim Donnelly, who's head of Active Communities in Northern Ireland, a global organisation um, based in countries like South Africa, Dubai, but he's going to, um, he's a regional manager, sorry, in, in Belfast. So we're looking forward to that. And we have Trevor Scanlon, local RDO formerly with the FAI and who is now heading up the Van Hags Academy and they've just completed the Building Positive Clubs programme that we've rolled out so um, we're looking forward to that. We also have Alan O'Mara, current cabin goalkeeper who was the first inter-county footballer to come out and talk about depression in 2013 maybe um, and again hopefully how sport has played a massive role in his recovery and recuperation of that. 
Now it's that breadth and sort of the depth within those speakers, it, it sort of highlights the many issues that, that are within you know a lot of clubs around Donegal and maybe issues that people close but not central to those clubs are aware of. Absolutely, and I think at times we can be reactionary to those issues. There are quite a number of issues out there, whether it's addictions, whether it's low self-esteem, whether it's poor mental health. There's a lot of addition, and those issues are in sports clubs as well as in other communities and schools. Um, and I suppose um, at times, and we found it from the sports partnerships point of view, that a lot of organisations are, are, are reactionary to that. They're coming to us after there's an incident or an issue. Go on what Miles is saying there about the, the many challenges and issues that are within clubs. It's so important, isn't it, that coaches and people who are involved in running clubs and running teams are, are not just aware of these issues but, but know how to deal with them? Absolutely, and I think that sometimes people wait until an issue hits a club before they do anything about it. Um, I know we receive various queries and, and questions from clubs on, on how to deal with situations and maybe how they should go about things, but very often it's after an event has happened. Um, the My Word study um, that was done by Headstrong and UCD uh, a few years back highlighted the importance of one good adult in the lives of young people um, and how that buffered their stresses in some way. So I think that sports coaches have potentially a massive role to be that one good adult and to actually positively affect the lives of young people. So I think that's why maybe people are starting to buy into these programmes. I know any coaches that we work with in the Building Positive Clubs programme really, really um, appreciate it and valued what, their, I suppose, their own self-reflection um, and maybe realised at the end of it how they ultimately they could impact on, on the kids that they're working with and on their lives. I mean, that's the big thing about this conference, isn't it? It's about how the positive end of sport can, can help people who are going through whatever challenges they're going through in life. Yeah, absolutely, and communication is a big part of life. In, in fairness, and even within sports clubs, it's, it's one of the key areas of the program as well. How, how you know what kind of communication policies clubs would have, you know how the young people, how people connect with young people, how the coaches connect with them, how the administrators and Theresa has mentioned the one good adult study there. That that is key, and that really highlighted the the importance that you know sometimes uh, you know th those most closest to you might not be the person you connect with. So it could be somebody, it could be the local bus driver or it could be the local uh, coach or it could be the local guard there or whatever it is you know so it's important that we have that um, and I suppose clubs are no different uh, we have to have um, open clubs we have to have inclusive clubs we have to have clubs that accommodate for everybody uh, and you know so, and, and excluding anybody from sports is, is it's really detrimental to, to sport in general as well.